Hello everyone, my name is Keller Douglas and today for my Let's Play video I've decided to review for you a site called Jeopardy.rocks. I know that we've all probably been in classrooms in elementary, middle school, and sometimes even high school, junior high school, and we've played these um, Jeopardy games to review material that we've learned um, in preparation for tests or quizzes or some other activity. And sometimes in my experience, the games have been built quite awkwardly, even from taking a piece of construction paper and writing the question on it and writing the answer on the back and sticking that to the blackboard in the classroom. Um, and sometimes that can be a bit messy or a bit difficult for the teacher to put together before the class uh, gets there. So I decided to find a tool that would make it easy for that type of game or that type of Jeopardy activity to be built and played easily in class so that the teacher wouldn't have to spend so much time putting it together um, and setting up before the class started. I found Jeopardy.rocks through an internet search um, and I thought it was pretty easy and pretty simple to use so we're going to go through and look at it today. When you pull up the site Jeopardy.rocks of course you see an example of the game what the game looks like on the right and on the left you have you know the Jeopardy.rocks logo and a build now button and a play demo game which you can play at your leisure will show you a demo of it as we get toward the end of the video. Let's click on the build now. When you build now um, it asks you for a custom URL and we'll just put in for the sake of you know making something this we'll put in practice. Um, it asks you to give your email address and the reason that it asks you to give your email address is because it sends you a link to the actual game that you create. So there's nothing that you download on your computer at all, and there's not really a an account that you create. But in order to get to the game and get into the editing options for the game, it asks for your email address. So we'll put my email address here, and we'll create a password for it. And again, the password is for editing of the game and you click build game. Takes you to this generic looking game where you're able to build the game um, from the material that you've taught in class. Uh, I chose, I didn't really have any material to put in here, so I just looked up a lot of definitions on you know, weather forecast or meteorology terms just because the weather's so bad today and they're listed in alphabetical order. So we'll go in and put the categories as A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we'll just start at the tip, top of this list that I have. Um, the first word is ablation. So if we wanted to use ablation as the answer for the 100 level question under A's, we'd click on 100 and ask you for the question. And usually in Jeopardy, the question is the definition. The definition of ablation is the process of being removed. Snow ablation. Oh, well, we don't want to put that part. But snow ablation usually refers to removal of snow by melting. Um, I can't type either. So then we put ablation in the answer and click save. And you see that lights up as yellow. So that means that you've already entered something there. Oh, I should have shown you this before, but you can also enter a title here. So I can't spell meteorology terms. If that's wrong, please forgive me. Um, and you just go through doing this for all 30, I think there's 30, 6 times 5, yes, 30 questions. 
we'll do a few more. Next one is absolute humidity, which is the density of water vapor. We'll do a couple of the B's and the C's. Uh, we'll choose answer is going to be barometer. And the question an instrument for measuring atmospheric pressure. Black ice we'll use as an answer for this one, something that we've had a lot of here lately. The definition for that on this website is thin new ice that forms on fresh water or dew covered surfaces common on roadways. And you can you see how you know easy it is to build in the questions for the game. Now, there are no special bells and whistles that this game has. As a matter of fact, there aren't even any sounds with the game um, when you're playing it. So you would go through and build your game and put in all of the questions, even a final Jeopardy question, which you, the students would answer at the end. Um, and once that was all created, then you would click uh, finalize, I believe it is, and it would build your game. Now, I've already built a game so that we can demo for you. Once you build your game, um, they will give you a link. My link I chose was uh, www.jeopardy.rocks backslash famous Afro-Americans. Or famous Afro-Americans. That's the one I chose for my game. And they emailed me that link, actually, so that I could pull my game up here. And that allows you to email that information or to post that information embed it into maybe classroom material that's found online so that your students can play the game in their own spare time themselves and refresh themselves with the classroom material. Here we're given the option to play the game now and to edit the game. If you went to edit the game, it would ask you for the password that you created at the beginning when you first created the game um, so that you could get back in and change questions and answers. Unfortunately, there are no options to change the look of the game, so they all look about the same. Let's hit the Play Now game and go through a demo of playing the game. First, it asks you how many teams there are. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick two. We've divided the class into two teams. This part I thought was kind of cool, even though they don't have many options. It asks you to pick an icon or a character for each team captain. Um, just for the sake of being funny, we'll pick a potato and a broccoli. And every time you open up the game, it gives you a how-to on how to play the game. Um, and I think that was, it can be kind of redundant, uh, but for the sake of those people that may not know how to play the game, I guess it's very useful. Again, it's just like Jeopardy. You select a question by the category and the dollar amount. And whoever's controlling the mouse at the time will click a check mark if the team that buzzes in first got it right, or the X if they got it wrong. And if they got it wrong, that gives the other team the opportunity to answer the question. So you click Start Game. And here you see um, my game has started that I created. One little glitch that I saw that you can probably see as well 
with the game here on my computer, which doesn't happen on larger screens, um, and I think my screen may just be too small, is that the categories are lined up in a row in the middle of the screen at the top, which covers up the title, Famous 20th Century African Americans, um, and you can't quite read the titles of the categories. But from left to right, the titles of the categories that I set up were athletes, authors, I can't even tell what the, oh, civil rights, um, civil rights leaders was the third category, entertainers, inventors, educators, and singers, musicians. So if you wanted to play this game in class, then you would um, flip a coin, I guess, and ask the first team to choose a, a category. Say they chose athletes for 300. You would click athletes for 300. Um, read the, the clue. Consider the greatest basketball player of all time. I think we all know that's Michael Jordan. And say the potato team. Uh, click them first and answer the question correctly. You just click the check mark here in green. It displays the answer and awards the team the amount of money that the question was worth. Click continue and it goes right back to your game. Um, so I'm going to quickly just click through the game as if all of the questions were answered correctly by one team or the other so that we can see what the final Jeopardy portion looks like. There's a lot of clicking here, but there is a final Jeopardy portion, which gives you the final Jeopardy question for the team that scored the most money, I believe. I've never done the final Jeopardy question. are really smart. They've answered every question correctly. All right, down to the last one. Looks like the broccoli team won. And it says it's time for Final Jeopardy. And just as with Final Jeopardy on it, on the game show, it asks you to wager an amount of money. They'll wager 4000 whereas this team is kind of cheap and wagering 400 It asks the Final Jeopardy question. They got it right. And let's say they got it right as well. And then it reveals the winner, which is the team Broccoli. And that's the end of the game. But again, this game can be played over and over and over again um, just by going back to the URL that you've built. Uh, as far as privacy policy, they've got that listed here. Again, they collect information about you via your email address. Um, but they don't share that information with anyone. They don't use cookies for the uh, site, so there's no way to track things on your computer. And um, Google's advertising requirements can be summed up by Google's advertising principles. So Google is a third party um, of this site. There's a section for frequently asked questions, though no user questions are here. They ask you if you have a different question than what's listed here to email them or contact them on Twitter. And there's a list for the terms and conditions, um, which also lists the privacy policy here. If you're interested, you can go look at that. But as 
for that, um, that's all that Jeopardy Rocks offers. I think it's a good tool to use in classroom with students if you're reviewing material and wanted to put a little bit of fun in the review of material. Um, or if you wanted to give them a tool to use something kind of like flashcards, uh, but not as boring as flashcards to use to review for tests or quizzes or material that's coming up. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed my Let's Play video of Jeopardy Rocks.